video review of my new Grandsfors Brux American Felling Axe. It cost me $220 from a local, um, a local field day sh uh, show, so a local country fair. Uh, I was really excited because uh, it's hard to find Grandsfors Brux axes uh, in this part of my country. Um, you have to generally order them off the internet off of eBay and then they take four, four to six weeks to get here or you have to pay exorbitant prices um, through local merchants and this fellow was doing a special deal for this particular um, occasion so um, I couldn't couldn't turn down the offer really. I also had the, um, the double bid axe which is something I've always been after but it was just a little bit too much money more than I had in my wallet. Um, but there you are. Uh, so yeah the purpose of this axe is to cut down um, mid to large sized trees. Um, it comes with the, um, the leather sheath, you don't have to pay an extra for that, and it also comes with an axe book, which is um, a book that Grandsford sells um, or gives with all their sales uh, that shows their range. It's a bit of a catalogue and also a bit about the philosophy behind them and their, um, their axes and things. Um, when I first opened it, I was, um, as in took the sheath off, I was instantly struck by the, um, the sharpness and the, how well made it is um, as on the whole. Um, it's a classic uh, American head pattern, a Drayton, Dayton head pattern. Um, so it's got this, it doesn't have the deep beard that um, some of the uh, other filling axes have. Um, the pole isn't suitable for, for bashing on a wedge. This is purely a chopping implement. And um, it's a, a very good one at that. It's probably the best axe I've ever held and used. Um, not that I've used any other premium axes really, but um, there's certainly a difference between um, a hardware store boy axe, which tends to just be a, a wedge on, on a stick and a custom grade purpose made felling tool. Um, this axe uh, has a really narrow bit. Uh, this, I guess the bit's best described as the silver part. I reckon that would be the bit, this, this different sort of steel that's um, speci specially tempered to hold an edge and cut down things. Um, so the bit here is really narrow. Uh, on some storeboard axes you'll find it's more of a, um, it doesn't have this fleshing out here and it just wedges straight down into a quite wide head. Um, that makes it a good multi-purpose axe because I suppose the average person just wants the one, one to do everything. But the amount of energy you save having a special, uh, specialised tool is, um, is quite incredible. Um, so without any further ado I guess I'll go and um, change the angle and I've got a tree up that I cut down yesterday and I'll just do some cuts and show you how well it bites into the wood and um, go from there. I'll also run you through just what I take out with me when I go wood cutting even just on my block even if I'm just a couple of hundred meters away from my house I always bring this little first aid kit it's just got enough bandages in it for because I've had a couple of close calls you never know what's in a tree until you hit it um, some, some trees that look really straight and um, safe have uh, not hidden underneath the bark, maybe a limb has, limb's fallen off early in its development, has grown over and you can barely see it and you might strike it and they have a habit of deflecting the blade. So I've had a couple of close calls that have sort of encouraged me to carry this with me. I've never had to use it but it's a basic first aid kit with um, bandages and antiseptics and things like that in it. It's certainly not a chainsaw kit, if I'm taking a chainsaw out I'll take something with more substantial bandages but this is just a, a, a slicing and um, laceration sort of kit. Uh, I won't go through it because it's boring, it is just bandages and antiseptics, um, but it makes me feel a bit safer. And I also take out some water because um, I'm not unfit but I'm not the fittest guy in the world and this really burns um, burns fluid when I do it, I'm a sweaty fella. Uh, I've got this scarf around my neck, um, I've, it looks a bit ridiculous but I think in the whole I look a bit ridiculous but it's all about practicality and it just stops the sweat as gross as it is from running all the way down my back. Um, and then you just take this up and wash it. Um, and uh, what else have I got? I'm also just carrying the little um, Grandsfors hatchet. For anything else that might come up that needs cutting, you could use it for minor limbing, I suppose. And also just my Leatherman Skeletal, um, just which I always have on me around if I see something that needs doing. So hopefully you can hear me all right in the wind. Um, I'm gonna go across and uh, show you how to do some cuts. Alrighty. Alrighty, so here we are, I think it's a spotted gum, um, it was, uh, it has white ants um, 
has white ants all through the trunk and it was um, starting to encroach on a power line. We've had some shocking winds lately so I thought it best for it to come down. Um, it's a gnarled old tree, it's probably about 20 years old. Um, white ants get into absolutely everything up here and they make everything unsafe. Um, which is unfortunate because um, you do lose a fair few good trees. Um, there's plenty of erosion control still in this bank though. So I, I don't think it'll have an adverse effect on the, on the landscape really. Um, and yeah, as I said, it's almost got a hollow channel running through the very core of it. So I was a surprise, but um, yeah, I've been seeing it getting a bit weaker and um, yeah, seemingly um, yeah, seems to be threatening the power line and that would be a bit of a headache if uh, that was to come down. With all the dry stuff around here, I would not want a fire to occur so close to my house. So I'll just do some cuts in it and um, I'm not going to go all the way through it. Probably not anyway. Um, just as, to mainly show you how um, the axe works just for a bit of an action shot really, so there we are. In relatively few swings I've made some significant headway. I'm pretty much at the core of the tree now. Very little energy expended. Um, you get into a nice rhythm and uh, as you saw I think on the third or the fourth strike uh, just because I'm not a complete professional I've got a tendency to, to skimp or to skim across and that's all why it's important to stand far enough back and just have enough space around. The stump of this tree is really high for that reason you always leave quite a high stump when you're cutting with an axe because you go from waist height pretty much because you don't want to put yourself in an awkward, unnatural position because it tends to um, come back and bite you if you miss or stuff up. So yeah, um, yeah, I'm really happy with this axe and um, unfortunately I haven't really got much other use for it at the moment which is good because it means that no trees are rotting and dying away but it's bad because it's really fun to use. So there you are, uh, the Grantsford's American Felling Axe. Uh, the 35 inch variety I said as well, um, I must mention, they make a 31 inch variety too but get the extra little bit because it um, means you can stand that bit further back and uh, get that little bit more power in each swing. So pull the trigger on one if you haven't already. Uh, Olsen store on eBay or um, uh, Drayton, Daytura, no Dahlgren Trading, DahlgrenTrading.com. I'll put a link down below. Um, if you're in Australia and you want to grab one of these axes, which you should because they're excellent. Thanks for watching.